Please welcome author Taylor Jenkins Reid. Taylor, thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Your books, Malibu Rising, Daisy Jones and the Six, and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo made you a household name. And now your latest book is about the incredibly attractive world of competitive tennis. The new book is called Carrie Soto is Back. Tell us about it. Uh, yeah, well, Carrie Soto is Back was probably the most fun I've ever had writing a book. It is the story of, obviously, Carrie Soto, who in the world of the book is um, the former number one women's tennis player in the world. When she retired, she held the record for the most Grand Slam singles titles ever. Uh, but it's been a while since she retired. She's 37 now. It's 1994. And she has just watched as a new rival, Nikki Chan, has matched her Grand Slam record. And she can't handle it. So she decides she's going to come out of retirement. She's going to play four Grand Slams and prove to everyone that she, in fact, holds the record for Grand Slam titles. OK, and so it goes. Wow. Um, but, but, but be honest with us now, because you've covered old Hollywood uh, uh, 70s rock stars, fame, and you've gone through different decades. Was focusing on tennis your an excuse, shall we say, for you to get into Wimbledon and mid-afternoon pins and strawberries? <laughs> Yes. Yes. Especially because I, I wrote it during the pandemic when I'm lost in my locked in my house and I can't go anywhere. And I just wanted to go to London and have some strawberries and cream. Sounds good to me. We all love that. The lead character in the book, of course, made an appearance in Malibu Rising, your last book. And there seems to be this amazing thread of character crossovers and continuations. Do you have some sort of amazing mind palace that you could be writing a book <laughs> and have the germ of the next book there and have bring that character in knowing that they're going to have their own book? How do you do that? I, um, I think you're giving me a lot more credit than I deserve. I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants here. I, when I finished Malibu Rising and was trying to think of what I wanted to do next, the idea of writing about tennis was really interesting to me, but the main tennis player in Malibu Rising is the guy named Brandon Randall, and I was not interested in him. I was like, don't want to write a book about him. And then I thought, oh, but wait, you know, the woman that he's having an affair with, Carrie Soto, that is an interesting woman to check in on later. And that's really where it began. Okay, well, no, we just had this image I prefer of a, the mind a, palace. Yeah, so do I, yeah. <laughs> CSI, CSI wall. Absolutely. Where there's lines going from one corner to another. Okay, for, forget my real answer. I have a mind palace. <laughs> and I'm three steps ahead of everybody. <laughs> oh, God. Listen, before you got to go and start topping the New, uh, the New York Times bestsellers list, you worked um, in casting uh, in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So, you know... Well, <laughs> I'm thinking of why you decided to leave that and move into the world of writing. I really loved working in casting. Uh, it was the thing that I, for most of my teenage and college years, I was telling you, I'm going to be a casting director. And I loved it. But once I started doing it, I realized I, I wanted to get involved in the story before that point. I wanted to create the characters and, and then see who would play them. And so I started writing. But for whatever reason, I never wrote a screenplay at first. I was like, oh, no, I would write books, obviously. So um, it's helped me a lot, I have to say, when I'm when I'm coming up with characters and I'm thinking about what actors would play them and, and what elements of it would come to life. Um, I think those two parts of my brain work in sync. All right, but we want to go back to the mind palace. We want to know that <laughs> you were you were taking in scenes as a as a casting assistant and saying mm, that's, that's right, juicy. Yeah, this could work in a book. Keep this for later. <laughs> I was taking notes the whole time. <laughs> well, the connection is real because Reese Witherspoon has nabbed the rights to bring Daisy Jones and the Six to our screens, and Elvis and Priscilla Presley's do uh, granddaughter Riley Kyo mm -hmm. is due to play Daisy. Is it hard to stay cool when you when you see that your creation, you what you've yes. brought to the page, is now going to make it to the screen? It's incredibly hard to stay cool. It's also very hard to stay cool around a cast like the cast of Daisy Jones of the Six. They are so glamorous and cool and beautiful, and um, 
getting to spend time with them feels a little bit like I've been invited to this inner circle of, uh, of Hollywood. Um, but more than that, it is such a good show. It is such a good show. Riley is phenomenal as Daisy. Sam Claflin is absolutely brilliant as Billy. I cannot wait for people to see it. Okay, but you're also thinking the Elvis movie that's in cinemas right mm -hmm. now, there's a whole new generation of people who are learning more and Absolutely. more about her granddad. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a great movie. A, a really great movie. But but, but given that so, so much of your stuff is the options being taken up and, and tar actually turned into productions, are you now writing with the idea that this is something that could become a movie or a TV series? I think that because I write in both spaces, I, I write in Hollywood and I write books, I, I think... I'm, I'm always considering how best to tell a story. But when I choose for a story to be a book, I am entirely focused on making it the best book that it can be. Once it's done, then we can all talk about, hey, could this be something else? And, and how would we translate that? But for, for one brief moment in time of that book's life, when it's just me and the blank screen, I have, you know, tunnel vision and I just want to make it a be as beautiful of a book as I can. Well, after you finish writing your babies and you release them to the world, something strange also happens to your books. And that is that they go on TikTok and people cry <laughs> while they're <laughs> quoting your books. What do you make of this? I, you know, I've only seen a few of these because um, it it's sometimes hard to process. But can I tell you, all I have ever, ever wanted was to write a book that made somebody feel something. And so TikTok has been a really nice way of being able to see that maybe I'm doing that. Maybe some of these books are really getting to people and touching them and that makes me happy. They sure are. They're ugly crying on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Why are any other kind of crying? Well. <laughs> if it's real, it's ugly. You know? Yes, exactly. exactly. If the cry is real, yeah. <laughs>